Hi everyone. Uh, today we have a guest, Emil, who is or was a student uh, of mine, and now he's graduate. Uh, he's graduated, and um, he can tell us a bit more about the course that he studied, as well as various experiences that uh, he's had during his university years. Right, uh, over to you, Emil. Would you like to introduce yourself first? Hi, my my name is Emil. As said, uh, I am a uh, I guess past student of uh, from the University of Bryson from Norway. I studied digital games development. Uh, yeah, that's that's quickly some details about me. Cool. So I'm going to ask you some questions about various things and then feel free to kind of digress if necessary, because um, I think a lot of people will be interested, particularly those who are considering uh, applying uh, and getting into kind of uni uh, to year one. So it would be good um, to provide some insight, so to speak. Yeah. So in terms of uh, the course that you studied, what kind of modules uh, did you do? So modules are like subjects, right? Um, and what kind of jobs graduates uh, might be able to do afterwards once they've completed their course? So I, uh, so the modules I did was uh, to name a few, as there is, there is some of them. Uh, I did uh, 3D modeling and animation, uh, introduction to game design and development. Uh, game development frameworks and uh, multiplayer game development, to name a few. Uh, what kind of jobs graduates can will do is um, uh, is within the gaming industry. So you have gaming programmer, uh, level designer, uh, yeah, general like that. Uh, of course, you can, as I will, uh, go through the IT department a bit more. So, like regular programming. Uh, yeah. What about uh, the modules themselves? Can you elaborate on some of them? So, 3D modeling and animation, you get tasked with uh, making a 3D model and <laughs> uh, animating it. Uh, surprisingly in, yeah surprise surprise uh in introduction to game design you you go through how to uh, design a, not not necessarily design a good game but how to design a game good <laughs> because um, no one knows what a perfect game is yeah sure uh, in uh, multiplayer game development, as as you know yourself, uh, you get tasked with uh, making a uh, pawn game and uh, figuring out the multiplayer online deal and setting that up. Yeah, so um, I know some people added more players to the yes. pawn game, kind of making it m multiplayer. Uh, almost like breakout, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, there was you could uh, redesign porn, remake it as as your own, which I've found quite enjoyable. Cool. So uh, continuing on from that, um, why why did you decide uh, to get uh, a computing related degree? So essentially, we have like a lot of options in terms of games because there's games art, games design, um, but they're separate. They're kind of more media related. Um, so why computing specifically? So I started with a uh, quite a high interest in uh, gaming, video games and board games. Um, I think I was six years old when I got my first console. So uh, that interest has always been there. And then someone showed me programming. I think when I was 11, 12. 
So, and for some reason, I didn't connect that programming and gaming went hand hand in hand before yeah. later on. Like, oh, you can make games. What 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 is this magic? Uh, and then I decided to do to combine video games and programming, so, and and computers at all. So why not? Yeah, I indeed, computers are very cool, and they're getting uh, even more so these days. Yeah, with all yeah. the different ways to connect them, uh, the hardware with, with games, because essentially. Yeah. Um, at the CPU level, it's just adding numbers together, right? It's, yeah, it's so the, cool how this translates to some everything. 3D characters moving around in the 3D world. Yeah. That's just fascinating. Yeah. It's so uh, what do you like most about studying at university? Or I suppose what you liked during your studies? What were the things that you really enjoyed, particularly compared to like high school, um, college type thing? So I really love the... Uh, level of what what got taught in classes and the mm. focus of the classes so like so i'm i'm talking from a norwegian experience of course uh when when you go into like high school lessons lectures there might be someone doing something completely different in the back rows for example, <laughs> but at, at the university, I noticed that everyone in that room wanted, in some sense, to learn what the lecturer was going through. So that's really good to hear because I, I thought the same thing happened uh, 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 in our classes as well. The back row is always like doing something else. <laughs> yeah, but they also have the freedom if they don't. If they want to do something else, they're allowed to do it, but outside yeah, of the class. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, uh, and then I, I, to continue that, I did enjoy meeting like-minded people. Mm. So we we would have talks after class where we talked, oh, what video games are you playing? How did you do this and that? Did you have any uh, like social, what are they called? Um, social events? <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah, well, almost. <laughs> what I'm trying to figure out is there are like se separate sections where students go and, uh, and these are like events that are controlled by students. Um, oh, so I can't remember societies. the name for it. Yeah, societies, there you go. So are you I... part of any? I start. Uh, I I joined in first year. I started. Uh, started. I joined uh, a game jam society. Oh right, yeah, that, that's the yes. one that we had, and then COVID kind of killed it completely. <laughs> yes, uh, sadly, uh, I I was the leader of that society during COVID. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which is, how did that go? Uh, yeah, as you said, it got killed. <laughs> <laughs> due to due to COVID, um, but via that society, I met people that I enjoyed making games because game jams are uh, you get a set time limit to make mm. games. So forty eight hours make a fully fledged game. Yeah, and also food. That's always a bonus, right? <laughs> yeah, free food is is always good. It's. Uh, it's yeah, a, we should uh, probably renew renew that um, society, perhaps with, with the uh, new students now. Yeah, it's it's definitely definitely a uh, society that fits the uh, course. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, and I joined a games society. Oh, is that like board games? Board games, video games, but like not necessarily creating games right but like so just meet on the other, on the other side of games then okay, enjoying yeah, games yes. rather than making them yes um, and but i should say ma making is also enjoyable sometimes of, of, or, or. of course it's uh <laughs> it's uh, it's enjoyable when it goes forward in the program <laughs> yeah yeah that's true so these were the things then that you liked what about dislikes 
anything that you wanted to improve in the university process? So uh, going from uh, the upper secondary school to university level, uh, I noticed more responsibility mm. being put on me. Um, and and with that, there's I didn't feel like I'd got to uh, into a good contact with most of my lecturers. Mm. Some people, some lecturers felt like uh, they were in, like I couldn't achieve contact with them. Right. Uh, something I might uh, mention later on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a cliffhanger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anything else about dislikes? Uh, not not really. or content, modules, anything um, you would have liked to cover while I, you're studying ga you're studying games. So so I I know the changes have been made, but if if I could go back to first year and change stuff, mm. I would definitely go with the C at the start, C C sharp or C plus plus. Right. In first year, which is, uh, I think, is it, it is what happens now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first yeah. year is now C sharp, C plus plus. Second year is C plus plus, and yeah, uh, JavaScript, uh, and then the yeah. final year is basically whatever you choose, um, yeah. al alongside C plus plus, obviously. So C plus plus is now the theme, the backbone of the entire games courses. In, instead of Java, which was instead of Java, yeah, we yeah. moved away from Java to C plus plus. We still have Java modules in case people wanted them, yeah. uh, but there are optionals now, uh, optional modules. But, so, uh, any practical advice to someone who's starting their first year at uni, um, or advice on how to be a successful student? Successful. <laughs> so. So one thing I I kept telling my fellow students all all the time was ask your teacher mm. or lecturer ask them they that is their job yeah uh, so if uh, if you have any questions or you you have a bug you can't you cannot get through email them and ask. And if they don't answer the email, uh, keep sending emails. <laughs> uh, so what I did was that I, I sent an email, say on a uh, on a Monday, asking for help. And if I didn't get a reply before Wednesday, I would send another email asking, "Hey, did you?" Did you receive that last one? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Forty-eight hours. That that's the yes. time frame in which we're expected to uh, reply. And then just continue every forty-eight hours. Just send. It. Yeah. Alternatively, yeah. find find the person uh, in person. <laughs> yes, that that is of course better. But I I do find it easier to formulate myself via an email. Yeah, because you have time to think about what you're going to say. Um, yeah. And also, if it's a like a bug or something like that, then sometimes just writing the email helps. Because yeah, when you're writing the email, it. you're trying to figure out what the actual problem is. So yeah. once you formulate the question in a particular way, your brain goes, oh, I know the answer to, the, to that email, yeah. to that question. <laughs> There's no need to send the email. <laughs> uh, and, and it's easier to show the code. Via yeah. an email, because in person you will most likely end up uh, getting told, "Yeah, just send me the link to your GitHub <laughs> or uh, like, something like that." So I mo mostly use Teams to communicate, Teams messaging uh, with students. Do you think it's easier or harder? It's it's if if the lecturer uses Teams like regularly, which I know you do. Uh, well, I basically live in the dig digital world. <laughs> yes, 
it's it's easier because you can see if the lecturer has read the message. Yeah, which is wonderful. But of course, if they if they only check their teams like every other month, it's going to. <laughs> I I would I would uh, definitely go on to emails or in person if that is possible. Of course. All right. Um, yeah, that, that's so. That's the uh, advice to uh, new starters. Anything else? Uh, uh, first year is not that. It's it's important, but it's not that important. Mm. So uh, I did the mistake of uh, draining all my energy in the first year. <laughs> Don't do that. Just, did it pay off? Uh, it, it did in some ways. Uh, but then again, I was very tired going into second year. Fair enough. And second year is, I think, on average, uh, more difficult, or yeah. there, there is more to do in second year mm. than first year. And the expectation is also higher, because at yes. level four, we basically say, well, you don't know anything. We can't expect students yeah. to know anything. So we treat you like you don't know anything. At level five, the status quo changes because we now know that you know something because <laughs> you've gone yeah. through level four. So the expectation is higher. Of course. it's. Um... And what about level six? So this level year three. Uh, year three level six is Again, I th I think if the if there was a graph of like difficulty, mm. it would it would show like a hill where second year is the hill, right? Because I I in the amount of work, uh, so third year is less work in the sense that you have to work on. You, you sort of have one module, your personal project. Yeah. Goes right. through the entire year. Mm. So you sort of, uh, it, it's less less to work mm. on, but so it, it feels to to not, I, I don't want to say this word, but easier <laughs> than second year uh, in, in the sense of amount of yeah. work. Yeah. And, but but then again, it's more responsible right, responsibility on you, the student, to actually put up a working schedule. Yeah, that's right, because at level six, which is the final year, uh, we treat students as if they were almost fully independent. So there will be fewer classes and uh, like supervision mostly will be around giving advice rather than yep. saying, do this, do that. <laughs> yes. So, so when it then comes to things like coursework and, and exams, so assessment in, in all three years, do you find that there is a balance? Um, or how do you find them? Like, do you want more exams? Do you want more coursework? I, I really enjoy coursework. Uh, in the computing sense, I. I really like practical work, mm. and I I I hear from my friends in Oslo, the capital of Norway, for those who don't know that, uh, that they have sitting exams writing on paper. They have to write code, right? Uh, without it, without debugging possibilities, <laughs> and I'm. Of course, University of Oslo, if you're listening, you are a good university. I'm not saying <laughs> that. Uh, uh, so I, I really enjoy the coursework. It's more practical. Mm. Yeah, that, that seems to align with uh, what we initially thought about the course. Um, so currently, I think it's 90% coursework and 10% exams, would you say? Yes. Because uh, is... there is. There's at least one exam that I can remember. It's in web development, right? In the first year. Yes. Uh, and then there's uh, 
the API one in Settlement. Right. Yes. Um, and on the games courses, that's probably the only two exams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that sounds about right. Uh, the ones I can remember, at least. Hmm. So, yeah. OK, well, given that you enjoy um, coursework, I assume you've used multiple programming languages uh, as you are yes. developing various parts um, of coursework at uni. Yes. So what is your uh, current favorite, I guess, favorite <laughs> programming language? <laughs> so my, my favorite will always be uh, C++. Like that is my go to. OK, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's I, I've I've started to enjoy uh, Java and Kotlin a bit more. Yeah, they're, they're different, right? Like it's not yeah. really like directly comparable. They have a di different feel to them. Yeah, it's it's uh, definitely a different feel. And, so uh, what is it about C++ that you enjoy most? I just like the complexity. And and I know you might say, oh, but Kotlin is so complex. What do you mean? No, it actually, I was going to say <laughs> that why complexity? <laughs> because that's no, the whole point of programming languages. You want them to be simple. It's you, you do want, but I, I do I do like the amount of control. That you get with oh, C++. okay. So and, and with more control, the more complexity in my mind. Right. So, so you want to be able to control a lot of uh, that various aspects of your code yes. down to yes. basically hardware, because yeah. in the Java Kotlin world, we are isolated because of the uh, Java virtual machine. Yeah. So I uh, that that is why C++ and in some degree C sharp will hmm. always be on top, but it's Java slash Kotlin is climbing. And uh, mm. yeah, because we, we now have a head of time compilation, which basically runs native code. So that's yeah. uh, getting there almost. As long as there's an API to support it behind the scenes, should be fine. It's good to know that C++ is something that you really like, because uh, I think most students would have picked a different language, because C++ is indeed complex. I mean, yeah. learning it, the learning curve is it's it's, it's different. <laughs> it's 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 different, and you because the, there will these. be like the different curves along the, alongside yeah. it. Yes. Uh, With most programming languages, it's like it, it goes up slowly. But I mean, like you're learning more, you're, you're kind of acquiring knowledge about the language. With C++, it's like I know stuff. I don't know stuff. But I know yeah. stuff. And then you might go back a bit, and it, it goes a bit like a roller coaster, to be honest. Indeed. <laughs> um, I I do know that, uh, or oh, I've heard that people really enjoy Python. That could be true. Uh, uh, yeah, but I, 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 I think I've written fifteen lines of code in Python. Yeah, but these uh, were quite important fifteen lines, weren't they? Is that part of yes, the robotics yes, project? Yes, it was. Do you want to say was, a bit yeah. more about the robotics project? Because it's not confidential or anything. <laughs> so the robotics, I, I can at least talk about my part uh, yeah. it's the robotics project was um, going from a, a gesture recognition software to a robot doing something and my um, responsibility was to get the java code that my colleague went did java to python and then I had to do Python to the uh, a Raspberry Pi that, to then communicate with the robot. Mm. So the Python was uh, API and communication with the API. Uh, yeah. And I really enjoyed that. 
Yeah, um, it is pretty cool to be able to see how something so abstract connects to something so physically real. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, the it, it was a good feeling doing like hand movements and seeing the dots on the screen move with <laughs> it. And yeah. and of course getting replies from the Raspberry Pi API. Yeah. That is indeed pretty cool. Um yeah. Perhaps sometime in the future, uh, we might start collaborating on that a bit more as well. Yeah, I would love that, to be honest. So what else uh, did you do in terms of projects? Given that you're a game student, uh, presumably you've done lots of, you've made lots of games or demos. Yeah, I've, uh, I've made, a, well, a lot of games. Uh, I've made my favorite, which was uh, Deck of 2020. Okay. Which uh, was part of a game jam. Right. Where I used Unreal Engine, and uh, I used a lot of what a wide thought taught uh, in uh, second year, uh, where you because there was a lot of things happening in 2020, as we mm. all know. Uh, so there's it's a deck uh, game where you or card game where you get an event that happened in 2020 and you choose what your reaction to that event is and then you might lose health you might lose sanity you might lose yeah you you have to like survive 2020 Oh, that, that's pretty cool. So it's almost like a, a story, a choice driven game. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the user. And, and, and we made. We made it moddable. So you, if if a person downloads the game, they can make their own parts if they uh, want to. Right, so they can add their own situations and then their yes. own responses to these cards. Yes. Yes. That's pretty cool. Is that available? I want to play it now. It, it is available. Uh, How I, much does it weigh? Because <laughs> it's Unreal Engine. <laughs> the the thing is, it's it's quite simple. I think every, oh, I'm, I'm, not every computer, but because someone will drag up something. Um, <laughs> But I think most computers can run it. Um, and then uh, I have gotten some feedback that there's a game breaking bug. Okay. But it seems to be random. So <laughs> these are the worst types of it. bugs, random ones, yeah. where yeah. you don't have a particular sequence of events uh, that you can yeah. utilize in order to trigger the bug. I've never gotten the bug. <laughs> never but every another way player... of saying it works on my machine <laughs> yes so why doesn't it work on yours we're it's, not shipping it's... your machine <laughs> it's it's weird uh, it's free online uh, of course you can donate if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> send me the link as I, uh, I, at some I, point I, i'll add it to the um, video description i will do yeah so while you were at university or kind of uh, skills that you acquired or anything that you acquired during your time at university that can't be acquired anywhere else or not easily at least? Uh, I, I, I learned that it's you that the skill of saying yes to things is important. Mm. So uh, like events, uh, holding presentations or uh, sending emails to lecturers, you <laughs> just just do things. And uh, in first year, I used uh, fake it till you make it. OK, that was my main motto in uh, first year and it paid off. So definitely say yes to things. Yeah, that, that, that's a good way to approach certain things uh, because if you think you don't qualify to do something, then you're, not, you're never going to qualify to do that thing. Yeah. So, you, so you have yeah. to kind of go through the process. Uh, yeah, th that's a very uh, good approach to things, actually. That's a really good point. Anything else? 
Uh, not not really skills you cannot l e easily learn from the internet. No. So it's mainly the uh, realization that even though you'd get like asked to do a presentation in front of uh, what 30 first years. Yeah, well, just, depending just on say the yes. course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Because well, if, if we're talking computing, then it could be 258. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> but in the in the scale of ner uh, ner nervousness, in yeah. my case, uh, 30 was as much as 200. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how that works, right? If you get used to 30, you're kind of also getting used to 200. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's. Uh... So there is a specific module that um, is a degree project that you completed and everyone needs to complete before they graduate. Yeah. And uh, can you just tell us a bit more about what you did, how you did it, and what were the kind of main um, learning outcomes or like takeaway messages? So. So my project was to uh, figure out the best way to program an AI in Unreal Engine 4 uh, for finding uh, the player mm -hmm. in a pre-made set level. Uh, the uh, the learning outcomes was that I, I learned how to program an AI. <laughs> <laughs> I also learned how Unreal Engine for implements AI mm -hmm. uh, or behavior trees, and I I got to experience the uh, C plus plus Unreal Engine. Uh, like instead of the blueprints. Side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the the difficulty of it. It's. Uh, I found it uh, as with anything. It was uh, it was easy in some parts and very difficult in others. <laughs> the easy bit is probably that you're given an entire year and, and you essentially uh, you can do anything you want. Yes, uh, but the difficult part is scheduling. It's mm. uh, getting the work done. Yeah and not ending up thinking oh i have a year i can relax for three months <laughs> <laughs> yeah time, time management is key for that uh project module because effectively you have a supervisor and that's it you don't have a lecturer per se because it's not a taught module um, no. More. The task is something that you actually come up with. There is no task initially. No. Which is yeah. quite interesting, I suppose. You, you can do anything you want, literally. Yeah, anything you want uh, within computing and yeah. preferably within games, depending on your course, of course. Yeah. So anything to recommend? Any tips, tricks? Suppose... You are now a student who's just starting in October uh, this very module. What things would you recommend to that student? So the first thing is the scale of the project. Ah, good one. Don't don't think too big, but you you don't you you will you won't know if it's too big before you actually started. And it, you, you're allowed to tweak your project. So always tweak your project. Don't think that once you have submitted your project to your supervisor, that it is set in stone. Project proposal. Yes, project proposal. Yes. Uh, I also want to give a tip that do your research on your supervisor. <laughs> and choose someone who actually answers emails. Rather than <laughs> uh, 
uh, it's it's quite important because if you actually get stuck with your project, you don't want to have a supervisor that is not available on Teams or uh, doesn't open their emails. Or from a different subject, I guess. Yeah, the this uh, you also want to align your areas of interest. Mm. Yeah, that's right, because if um, the student doesn't contact the supervisor, the the supervisor that they want within what is it? I think four days or something, then they get allocated one yeah. just because they haven't contacted anyone. Um, so I guess that kind of stems from what you're saying in terms of um, do your research on the supervisor, but also pick the supervisor quickly. Yeah, and uh, you can start that part of the research part already in year one. Yeah, because that's a good most idea. likely you will have your uh, supervisor as a part of your lecturers in mm. year one. Yeah, that's usually how it works. Yeah, so uh, and and to test it, you just have to uh, have an issue in year one and send an email, and you'll figure out if he didn't reply or she can reply to emails rather quickly. Uh, and then my uh, my third tip is uh, learn from your supervisor. Don't think that you have uh, you you have to do your research and you have to learn, but ask for advice, ask for tips, ask how should I do this to make it proper, mm. and uh, very much so in the report end of things. And uh, I will I will reiterate, uh, send emails if you have questions. <laughs> Don't be yeah. afraid to send emails. Yeah, con contact your supervisor because that's kind of what the supervisor's role is. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's, uh, contact them, ask them questions, and there's no stupid uh, questions. Indeed, yeah. That that's one of the things I always emphasize. A question's a question. It doesn't yeah. matter what kind of question it is. If it's a question, then there's something that needs answering. Or yeah. something that wasn't unclear. So um, people will be very happy to um, clarify. Yeah, and if if you have a question about it, it's very much likely that someone else mm. yeah, is true. wondering about the same thing, which might be a sign to the supervisor that he needs to uh, talk a bit more about that part of it. Yeah, because our understanding of different people is quite different. Yeah. Because uh, when supervisors talk about certain concepts, these concepts may not necessarily be familiar to students. Mm -hmm. So it, it is uh, important to follow up with questions and to initiate discussions. Yeah, and don't be afraid of uh, talking to your lecturer, sending emails, um, ask, asking and your to your students. peers as well, I suppose, yeah. because each supervisor will have multiple students uh, in a I year. Think it's, I think it's eight or it, it depends. Uh, yeah. yeah, depending on how busy the supervisor is. Yes. Uh, ask, uh, ask questions to everyone, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And do in in the individual project uh, make a group chat, perhaps in Teams right. or WhatsApp or Facebook. Yeah, that's actually a good idea, and that also generalizes like to postgraduate studies as well, uh, where research teams will have like a group of people that they are going to be either working with or studying with. Uh, getting to know them early, I think, will help because yeah. one way or another, you'll be stuck with them for for a while. So might as well get to know them uh, so that you can, you know, figure out solutions to more or less same problems because you're going to have similar types of problems. 
and within computing you'll definitely get the same problems <laughs> <laughs> any other tips tricks or something that would uh, simplify their job while working on this final year project i would definitely uh, get the working schedule mm. all like all fixed up at the start um, and set like boundaries set limits say mm. that you only work on the project like actual implementation of the idea until january february and if you meet february without finishing you know you have to tweak your project and then go on and do the report mm. after after you've tweaked your project and make it all, all right and of course make sure it works <laughs> uh, on on different machines and figure out if and where your supervisor wants your code better yeah. early than late uh, but then again if you have a supervisor that answers emails rather quickly you might you might be able to ask him like three weeks before deadline where where the code is supposed to be yeah. so again find a supervisor that answers emails <laughs> yeah that, that, that seems to be kind of the un underlying uh advice that works almost for anything at this point yes it's uh it's something that, that i told my fellow students a lot and it's send emails uh, if you have any issues, questions, anything, uh, because it's their job. That's that's why they're there. Yeah, indeed. So, and and if they notice that a lot of people are struggling with it, they might do like a uh, not not like a lecture focusing on it, but they yeah. might give like ten <clears throat> minutes to actually going through it yeah that sounds about right um i suppose the only um potential issue with uh responses could be during marking period because that's yes. when everyone's busy of course have have some respect respect for your lecturer don't email them at like 1 a.m on a <laughs> friday or Saturday. well i can guarantee at 1 a.m even i'm not going to reply <laughs> it's 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 and and uh let's say holidays vacations oh, yeah, yeah that, that's right because uh, annual leave is uh yes. something that's part of um yeah it, sometimes it's very difficult to get annual leave particularly for lecturers because we don't have we can't do it during term time yeah which leaves so, us only with uh mostly the summer christmas and easter periods have asked your uh, supervisor or lecturer yeah when th th that's they're... a good idea because some supervisors don't mind being emailed during yeah. um, holidays so if an arrangement can be made um then it's much easier to navigate yeah. So. All right. So, what's the uh, takeaway message from uh, your entire course? I guess. So you're graduated uh, graduated now. Uh, the, yes. Um, from the games course. So, any plans for where you're going to be working? So, uh, my my ambition is to work for Ubisoft. Uh, make the next assassin's creed yes i i would nice. love that but yeah bring course. bring back the the old assassin's creed because the, the yes. latest ones are kind of a bit weird <laughs> uh, they they aren't assassin's creedy <laughs> yeah indeed to say it like that, that that's true uh 
but of course I, I need to collect experience and all that. So I'm I'm going to start maybe finding an office here in Os uh, here in Norway in Oslo mm. and collect experience and right. uh, good entry positions are usually like quality assurance uh, yeah. like testing QA. that might be something that's uh, appropriate if you can't find anything that's related to say junior developer yeah. So would you want to do the development side or the design side? I I would I'm I'm kind of torn because I've always liked uh, level design. But of course I have my interest in programming and development, so. I'm open for anything. <laughs> <laughs> development or level designing so is my go to. OK, cool. And good luck with job hunting then. <laughs> thank you very much. So thank you for coming today on this channel to talk about uh, your experience um, at the University of Brighton. I think it's been very helpful, particularly for students who are thinking about getting into the games industry through uh, the academic route. Um, any uh, last comments to make? Uh, it figure out which uh, lecturer answers emails. I guess <laughs> is the uh, quote to take on. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's the subtitle of this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, uh, on this note, we are going to stop. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll be back potentially later to talk about different projects, maybe even collaborate on uh, new ones. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.